Good afternoon, all. This is Cynthia Hoffman with Westmark. Thank you all for joining us today for uh, West Valley is Open for Business virtual tour series. We started this series last year uh, amidst the, the beginning of the pandemic, where we wanted to bring projects to you because you couldn't get out and, and go visit them. And because of its uh, large audience and wild success, so we are continuing this program um, for the foreseeable future. So today we've got um, a project lined up in El Mirage, uh, which really tackles multifamily housing, which is an, an issue that we all need to be sure that we're providing diverse housing opportunities for our residents. So we're excited to hear from the group today and excited to have our um, Westmark uh, uh, Economic Development Committee co-chair, Mike Hoover, moderate the session. So with that, Mike, I will turn this over to you. Hey, thank you, Sintra, and happy Fat Tuesday. It's a Fat Tuesday edition of Open for Business. So I think it's really fun because we're going to be talking about four projects, uh, three of which are in two great uh, Northwest Valley communities in El Mirage and the City of Surprise. Um, so I'm going to do just some quick introductions. It's really fun for me today uh, because I get to um, share this moderator panelist role with my good friend and colleague in the City of El Mirage, Tom Doyle. Uh, also, we have some, some wonderful guests that are, are bringing some fantastic investment into the West Valley with Fourplex Investment Group with Garrett Seeley, uh, the Director of Acquisition and Development, Steve Olson, uh, the Director of Sales, and finally David Bond, whose um, major role is the, as a civil engineer for these projects. And when we're talking about civil engineering, really what we're talking about is turning dirt into something significant in our communities. Um, so what I'd really like to do is talk about a significant colleague of mine, introduce him. Tom Doyle with the City of El Mirage, who will talk about um, the implications of these types of development in their community and how this type of new addition is really um, raising the level of service for El Mirage, not only as a city, but as uh, a colleague and a champion in the West Valley. So Tom Doyle. Tom is having some technical difficulties, so we'll circle back with Tom um, after Steve discusses the, the El Mirage project. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Steve, if, if it's okay, I'd like to uh, inter have you introduce yourself uh, a little bit about Fourplex, and then uh, go ahead and dive into the wonderful project in the city of El Mirage, please. Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to do that. I think Kimberly's going to give me the slides here. We'll see if I can uh, not mess this up. I got a good chance. But um, I'm Steve Olson. I'm the director of sales for FIG, the Fourplex Investment Group. We're a builder, developer of multifamily properties, uh, spread out predominantly over the Intermountain West. And we, we bring a unique product type to Arizona, specifically the West Valley that we're excited about. We think you'll be excited about it too. We think it, it, it solves some challenges that uh, everywhere we go, um, attainable housing and housing costs and prices are a problem. And, and it's getting more and more difficult every single day. So we're, we're aiming to solve that from both the, the resident perspective as well as an investor perspective, because they have, you know, you got to get the investors on board with this in order to bring the capital in, right? It's a kind of a mutual back scratching thing we like to call it. So I'll give you a little bit of background because this is different than what you're, you're used to hearing about most likely from a multifamily developer standpoint. When we say a fourplex, right, we're talking predominantly about, uh, you know, one tax ID number, but there's four units. Now, many of you have seen fourplexes. I think most people for their own investments intuitively get that, hey, a fourplex is a pretty good investment. I think I wanna do that. Maybe I could live in one of them or maybe I could just own it and make rental income. And that's true. Most people understand that, they get it. But fourplexes do come with a couple of challenges that we aim to solve. And this is something that will be front and center. As, as we work in your communities there in, in Maricopa County. One of the challenges is, and I bet you've seen this, I bet you know exactly what I'm talking about. For whatever reason, back in the 70s and the 80s, builders put up a ton of fourplexes. It was all the rage. I see this in most metropolitan areas across the country. So you've got these little hodgepodge neighborhoods of fourplexes that kind of materialize over the years. But we're really honest with ourselves. We also know a lot of those are in disrepair. They're not in good condition, right? They've become kind of a, a bad area. They're not well taken care of. And that's because what happens is, is you've got that fractionalized ownership, right? 
investor Bob owns this one, investor Susan owns that one, and the ownership is all over the map. There's no uniform maintenance or, or preservation standard there. So if you own a fourplex in that community as an investor, what happens is if investor Bob across the street uh, let's move in whoever he wants or lets people park on the lawn or isn't maintaining the roof. We all know what this, this is the broken window theory. The development begins to just go down the drain. It becomes less desirable. And now we have a bunch of these neighborhoods scattered across America. And that's not what we're in this for, right? We want a, a, a big community because when we can build to scale and do a lot of fourplexes, that's great. The economy's a scale, but we can't have that, that challenge pop up. So FIG is known to do these large communities of quadplexes. They're owned by 20 or 30 different investors, but we have an HOA in place that manages that project, that cleans the grounds, right? That ensures the buildings, that makes sure there's um, you know, trash pickup, that maintains a basic level of amenity. And what we found to work really, really well in this market, well, we like the phrase attainable housing. And you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of construction happening, in Arizona, a lot of multifamily construction happening. And you know, most of it is what we would call class A. These are beautiful complexes, right? We, we joke that they're the Ritz. They're great. This is where you'd wanna go. Now, however, there's a significant portion of the population that, that is just not in the market for that type of unit. So we wanna deliver something that is new, that has some basic amenities like a small clubhouse, a pool, a tot lot, right? Some amenities in the project, but that is also at an attainable price for the people that are out there working hard and in, in all these expanding businesses there in Phoenix. And if we attach that HOA to it, then we can also bring in a lot of investors, people who want to own real estate, want to be in the multifamily space and put their capital to work. And then the city has a good, clean community where we've got happy investors, happy city, happy tenants. That's the objective, and that's what we're known to do. Um, I would say that another unique um, position about FIG as, as I roll into the El Mirage specifics here is our investors all engage in a pre-construction system with us. So we are heavily engaged with some of the local community banks there in Arizona too, bringing a lot of construction loans to them. And our investors come in, they take out these construction loans because when we sell a fourplex to the investor ahead of time, it takes a lot of risk off of our shoulders as a developer and a builder. And so therefore we can sell it at a better price to the investor. Therein, they've got a better return. And now you, you have a very sustainable way to bring new product onto the market. So that's a quick high level on FIG. We've done about 4,000 doors so far, primarily in the Salt Lake City, Utah, the Boise, Idaho, and the Houston, Texas markets. But with that being said, uh, Phoenix is our fourth market and we are very excited about it. We've got a project going in El Mirage. We call it the Village on Greenway. And I am trying to click over to it. We'll see if it works, Kimberly. I know we, I rehearsed this with Kimberly and she's wondering how I'm messing it up now. I like the slide. Steve, Tom has joined us. I wanna first thank you for that wonderful introduction and, and sure. really the characterization of what these projects bring. Um, one of the examples that comes to mind right away for me is uh, business parks in communities. Um, and I always like to joke about the business park and surprise, this isn't your father's industrial park. And, and really when we're talking about the types of, of development that you're bringing in, um, the way it's being managed for uh, sustainability, which means multi-generational, um, I think that is just the proper context for communities when they're talking about this type of investment, what it really means in the year 2021 and not the year 1980. And I really appreciate you characterizing that. So if it's okay, Tom, what we'll do is we'll have Steve introduce the project. Then we'll come back to uh, your portion of the presentation that really describes the impact for your community. Um, and then maybe uh, do some Q&A before we transition to the surprise projects. So Steve, feel free to continue. Sounds good, yeah, I'll continue. And then my colleagues that you see on the screen here, Garrett Seeley is our head of acquisition and development. And Dave Bond, owner of PFH Group is our civil engineer. He's been the lead on the the project there, which is right off of Dysart and Greenway. And we've got this slated as a, a, a variety of two bedroom units and a couple of a couple of one bedroom units as well. Right. So it's platted as triplexes. And you look at those buildings 
it just they just look like apartment buildings right that's that's what it looks like to somebody from the outside but to an investor or to a bank which see in those buildings is triplexes actually so you can kind of look at the stairwell of those buildings that's where if you separate to the right or the left of the stairwell that's a triplex vertically first floor is unit a second floor is unit b third floor is unit c right and so that, that that's how it looks but then we've got all this fragmented ownership that's all kind of kept corralled by the hoa within the project and it allows us to continue to to develop more and more all in all, there are 60 triplexes in here, seven duplexes, and the duplexes have a storage component with them with some garages that get rented out to, um, to the tenants. You can see there right in front of Surprise Elementary School, and we've got a little colored rendering of what the project looks like. The primary entrance is going to be up off of Greenway, and, and uh, I believe, Garrett, that'll be gated, no? His mouth said something. He's probably muted. Go. It will be gated and it'll come off of uh, Sunnyside Lane, which is right there. Oh, Sunnyside. Okay. Yep. Right there in front of the school. Yep. Yep. So the, just some basic amenities. It's not flashy, right? You're, you're all very familiar with the beautiful communities that Christopher Todd is doing. Those are really nice. We're not that nice, but we also give these people a swimming pool, a playground, some basic amenities so they can feel like they've got a, a community to, uh, to live in there. We've got a CMU wall going up a project, so gated community, like I said, with that pool, clubhouse, little kind of dog run type area. Bunch of covered parking along the front rows by the buildings as well. Um, let's see, Dave, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, we'll, and make sure you're unmuted. I'll give you some runway here. <laughs> I didn't do that to Garrett. But, uh, anything you'd like to add with the, with the, the community, what the development has been like working with the city any obstacles we've had to overcome overcome here what do you think absolutely um no actually some of the things that i wanted to mention uh specifically uh in particular the city of el mirage this is uh this is actually i've done a few projects on the industrial side but i haven't done any residential projects in the city of el mirage and i've been i've been in the valley uh doing civil engineering for the approximately uh, 20 years. Um, and I'd have to say this was probably one of the best groups to work with um, as far as helping us just get through the process. Um, Jose Macias and uh, Bryce Cristo and, and David Smith all kind of uh, took the reins and, and helped us in each of their uh, corresponding areas. Um, e even though this project is located in the city of El Mirage, it, it touches a lot of different organizations and a, diff a lot of different jurisdictions. Um, we had to coordinate quite a bit with the school across the street. Um, they were always very helpful. One of their concerns is, of course, the traffic going on on that street that they have. Um, we coordinated how we were going to have uh, a uh, the uh, a crosswalk um, so that it's safer for the for the students that need to cross the street, both uh, going around the the development but also going into the development. We're hopeful that there's going to be a lot of students, uh, kids coming from uh, from our development that's going to be attending that school. Um, we had to coordinate with uh, Maricopa County Flood Control District. Um, this, even the City of Surprise has most of the right of way up there on Greenway. We had to coordinate efforts with them, uh, APS, um, and throughout the entire uh, development process. Uh, it's just been a lot of help on all sides. Um, it's been great. Even at the at the eleventh hour, we had a we had a minor glitch um, that we had to just rectify very very quickly. And Jose stepped in and, and helped us out in a very, very quick and timely manner. So it's a, it's been a great experience in the city of El Mirage. It's a, it's a great project. Um, and like I said, it's uh, for, for residential, it's, it's gonna be awesome in this area and for, uh, for that community. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, that well said, Dave. And, and we appreciate all the local entities and officials that have helped make it happen. It's, as you know, it's teamwork. There's a lot of hurdles and you've got to deal with curveballs and and you all have been super helpful. Your staffs have been super helpful in doing that. Um, so that's a, a little bit of an overview on Greenway. I think let me check my my data here just before we kick it over to Tom. So we had our marketing people put together some, you know, concept conceptual plans. And mm -hmm. this is traditionally it's called a Matterport tour and you can interact with it online and and move through, walk through like you're in the unit. A little tougher to do on a webinar with a bunch of people. It gets um, really, really glitchy. Um, so 
these are, like I said, two bedroom units. You'll see a little in the bottom right corner of the family room. It's got a balcony. You go out that little door there, get, get a little fresh air, but uh, two bedrooms and we like two full baths. That takes the two bedroom unit to a completely different level and opens it up to a much broader uh, tenant base, gives you a lot, a lot of that flexibility. Um, so with that being said, there's a little insight into what the majority of the floor plans will look like. I know, Tom, you have uh, come back from the technological grade here and probably want to add something yourself to this. Let me turn it over to you for just a moment, please. Tom looks muted to me. Is anyone else seeing that? Yep. I guess Tom is not back from the technological gray area. <laughs> Hey, too Steve, soon. I, I, I said it too while soon. we wait for Tom to be able to queue in, um, I have a question. I, mean, I apologize if you said, how many units are, are we looking at on, on this property? Or doors, as you Let's call see. them? Um, I have that on the... I'm sorry, go. Garrett? 194. That's 194, and uh, the parcel is roughly how many acres? Just so uh, people get an idea of the type of units you're getting? It's about eight acres. Eight acres. Yep. Um, so, so as you as you can imagine, as as much land as we still have here in the West Valley, whether it be Surprise or El Mirage, um, densification is still important when we're trying to drive retail as well. Um, and and so these types of projects uh, really allow us to better deliver services to specific areas. Um, so I think it's important because we haven't in Surprise haven't had a a multifamily project. We had about an eight-year spell where we didn't have multifamily come into the community. So this is we're actually getting up to speed on on what the significance of these types of projects can mean for certain areas. Um, but the the but the potential to assist in the driving of amenities is one of them, um, and also utilization of of certain parcels. I know that this isn't a perfectly rectangle parcel. Um, you guys had the design around the configuration of the site, um, so it looks like a great utilization uh, of a parcel. Um, that's enhancing that area. So I, I, from my perspective, I want to say thank you. Um, I know Tom's going to write Q in as well, but I wanted uh, our, our viewers to be able to get a sense of uh, the delivery of uh, densification that we're talking about to this area. And Mike, I just want to jump in here for a little bit. Um, many of you, or m most of you may know that I used to work for the City of Surprise many years ago with my colleague, Mike Hoover. And I drove that route every day to and from work. And so to drive it now and to see what's happening in that area, uh, the products that are coming in, the services that are coming in, now the residential. And I, I know, Steve, you said we're not as nice as. And um, I, you know, I, I, think, I think this is going to be a tremendous project for that community. Uh, I think it is quite nice, actually. And just again, just looking at the way the landscape and the uh, the aesthetics have changed along Greenway is is very impressive. So excited about this. Can Can you guys hear me now? Tom's yeah. here. Yes. All right. Happy Fat Tuesday, Tom. Hey, I'm a boomer. You got to give me a break here. <laughs> All right. Hey, okay, boomer. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks everybody. We, we are so thrilled about Village on Greenway. I, I just put together one slide. Um, I wanted to point out some, some really significant things why we're so excited about, about Village on Greenway. If you, if you look at the bottom left, and I know that we've, we've already showed some, some signs here. This plaza to the left here is the Mirage Oasis. Um, that, that particular area, Number one, take a look at the traffic counts, 18,000 on Greenway, 17,000 on Dysart. One of the challenges we had was we couldn't get enough people, enough vehicles uh, into that area. We have some openings uh, in, that, in that particular plaza. And with, with the village on Greenway, I could tell you that the tenants in the Mirage Oasis are absolutely thrilled to be able to have so many people that would be able to walk in and visit uh, some of those particular areas. Um, so 
density was one of the big issues that we had in this area. So we're really thrilled about it. Um, I also wanted to point out this uh, retail pad number three down here on the left. As you can see, I, I, I do, I've got a couple other buildings here. That's another development. Um, it's called Cavan Commercial. There, there are two 10,000 plus square foot buildings. It's a flex space. Uh, they're gonna break them down into 1,000 each. Um, that is going to be down here too. So it's just the combination of the village on Greenway and this retail pad number three uh, is really going to help support the uh, the business community in that particular area. Um, one other thing too, I, I wanted to to say is, you know, El Mirage is for the longest time is really considered a bedroom community. Uh, most of the people, like a lot of West Valley cities. They're commuting down to central uh, Phoenix or east, east uh, the East Valley to work. Um, our our uh, Copper Wing Logistics Center in the southern part of the city is becoming a major employment center. Um, we are we are running nine development projects right now. We've got a couple really strong prospects. You know we're looking at at jobs. Um, in, in the 5,000 plus job range here, probably within the next two or three years. So having this development is perfect timing. Um, the Village on Greenway is also our only three-story building in El Mirai. So we're, we're thrilled that we're, we're going up as well as out. So uh, we are, uh, we're just ecstatic. Um, and on behalf of the mayor, uh, thank you uh, for considering El Mirage. It's some um, quick questions. So you started to touch on um, the, the the business uh, recruitment that you're seeing um, adjacent to the project, but you also have the coordination with the city of Surprise at uh, the Surprise Railplex. Um, so when Tom's promoting his community, when Surprise is promoting theirs, the Railplex um, uh, that's technically in Surprise sits right along uh, El Mirage. In fact, uh, we're, we're partners in the promotion of that industrial park so when those when those jobs whether they come on the east side or the west side of of Dysart road are jobs for both of our community members and what what i really like to see is what you're talking about tom is is you you have essential services with education um, within walking distance and with the the business park across the street you now have the opportunity to potentially even ride your bike to work uh, and have a quality of life that this product is going to deliver into that area uh, that is lacking right now. Um, so I, I think when we're talking about these projects, it's not just the aesthetics of the projects or how they're uh, utilizing uh, land that may be uh, unique, um, but it's also the impact they're having on the local commerce, uh, but also um, how it aids our ability to recruit more business. So, um, so Tom, can you talk a little bit about that coordination piece between the City of Surprise and El Mirage and, and how Dyser Road is actually looked at as a uh, uh, articulation point and not a competitive point? Yeah, you know, I think it, it really goes back to our relationship that we have together between the city of, of Surprise and, and El Mirage. Um, it's, we we both recognize, like you said, Mike, that, that uh, what benefits one benefits another, especially when you're talking about job growth, it, it um, People, people work beyond the, the actual boundaries of, of a municipality. So um, that is really helpful. And in this particular situation, because Greenway, Greenway Road, um, the, the authority of, of Greenway as far as keeping it up and running falls under the city of Surprise and not El Mirage, that required a lot of, of, uh, of special coordination and, and some concerns um, on the uh, the southern boundary of of surprise primarily about traffic additional traffic along greenway and uh, we just were, were able to answer the questions and and work it through and and i know steve also mentioned about uh, the special relationship they had with surprise elementary school and they were really supportive and showed up at the planning and zoning meeting to show their their full support with this so i i think overall the the coordination that was involved with this um, was really uh, really outstanding and and Steve thank you so much and I'll certainly pass on to our engineering and building official 
your kind regards uh, concerning the level of service that uh, that the city provided to you. We're we're happy to yeah we're happy to be there. Happy to be your first skyscrapers in El Mirage. Yes. <laughs> Um, we can uh, we can take it uh, from this one. I, I don't know if anybody, if, uh, Mike, you went over some Q&A for Greenway. Do we have any more specifics we want to get into before we move on to the next one? No, I think we did a great job on the overview. Um, and I'm, okay. I'm excited to talk about the surprise products to see kind of the compare and contrast and, and the locations and um, and then also, Tom, I, I, I always welcome your your uh, your input because um, while we work in different cities, uh, I think we're we're really in the same community at the end of the day. Yeah. There's a, a couple of highlights there before we we kick it on to surprise. I know Mike's excited for that. You're here just in time, Mike. Well, you've been here the whole time, but uh, <clears throat> this is Hayden Farms, and this is located um, right near the northwest corner of Cotton and Cactus over there in uh, Surprise, so a, a little ways away, but not not too bad. And this is a different product type we'll have going in here. We've got 39 fourplexes and nine duplexes. They're all townhouse style units. Um, we think it's uh, for the type of neighborhood, and also we try to do a diverse product type whenever we can. It's, it's just better for the market overall when tenants have options to choose from. So you can see a couple 3D renderings of what that's going to look like. I think we'll probably file for the uh, public report on this project in about 30, 45 days or so, from what I understand. And then, then we'll be inching closer to starting construction on this one. We expect uh, sticks coming up out of the ground probably early this summer sometime. And uh, in, in the world of construction, that could always change, but uh, I think we're tracking pretty well with that. There you see Paradise Honors High, right? You can see cotton and cactus. We're right there next to Ryder Ranch, and they've got a, a commercial a pad. Looks like it'll be a grocery store or next. Once, hey, Steve, one second. Can everybody hear Steve? Steve, you're cutting out right now, sir. Steve. He's going. He's going for it, Mike. I like yeah, him. we're we're missing something really good here. <laughs> I'm going to use my interpretive dance uh, degree right now to see if I can. Sorry for the technical. We, can, we can't hear you, Steve. We can, we can see you, but we cannot hear you. We lost your audio, Steve. But there was so much passion behind that description. Yeah. All right, I'm texting him quickly. We'll see if he can rejoin. Um, so while while Steve uh, fixes that, just just so the audience kind of has a some frame of reference for the city of Surprise. City of Surprise is one of the fastest growing cities from 2000 to 2010. Um, but after the Great Recession, um, the city went eight years without a multifamily project being submitted um, for um, review um, by city officials. And we're really excited because in the last um, 18 months, we've had a lot of new product, a very diverse group of multifamily product um, that is being introduced into the community, uh, not just in one specific area, uh, but along the 303, along uh, some of our major commercial corridors, whether it be Bell Road uh, or Litchfield Road, and then also into our city center. And from, from someone who went through the Great Recession in the community, and saw uh, the pullback, and now to see um, what I consider to be some catch-up work uh, with great investment groups like FIG coming in to bring that diverse of housing stock, it is so needed and so important, and it really is providing the type of choice um, for our community members and our new community members that are coming in um, to be able to have. So I wanted to uh, give Steve a, maybe a minute for his um, his internet to catch back up and provide a little bit of the City of Surprise uh, backdrop on how important these types of projects really are for our community sustainability. Um, Steve, yeah. are you back on, sir? I think so. Can you see me, hear me? Yep. I think you okay. dropped off just after uh, the location uh, description. 
Um, so if you want to, if it's okay, start from the location of the of the project, and and then we can we can go from there. Well, I said all the important stuff, and now I forgot it. I don't know what we're going to do now, guys. <laughs> I'll give it my my best shot. But um, yeah, we're we're right off of the the northwest corner. Um, well, a couple of a little bit north northwest corner of Cotton and Cactus. There in Surprise, uh, you know, new Costco going in. I think uh, I haven't measured it, about a half a mile down the down the road there. This is right next to Ryder Ranch. It's a couple of blocks north of the new Toll Brothers development there. So there's a lot of great new quality housing going in. We're aiming to provide, like I said, that attainable rental in a new clean community with amenities that a family, that, you know, that they can aspire to. They can get in there. We've got units that are 1,350 square feet with an attached two-car garage, which is a great unit. We've got mm -hmm. units that are almost 1,700 feet square feet with a one car attached garage, they're a little taller. So we've got some ability for people to have different floor plans to choose from in these units, which are primarily townhouse style units. And this too will be gated, pool, clubhouse, you know, some basic amenities for these people that we anticipate are gonna be working all up and down the 303 and, and headed to all different parts of the valley or maybe working there in surprise. So we're excited to bring it to the market. So Steve, one of the amenities you have nearby also is the new um, the new school at Legacy. Um, so it looks like both of your projects uh, are locating next to schools or near in nearby uh, proximity to schools, which again, I think is so important for these families as they're they're making those decisions. I, I just want to confirm: is this a rental product or is this an ownership product? This is a rental product. Yeah. So this will be similar to El Mirage, where Every, every single parcel you see on that map there is owned by a, a dentist or a surgeon or some kind of investor who believes in your community, who, mm -hmm. who wants to put their dollars to work there. But like I said, it's, it's sustainable for us because when we can build it in this model, it allows us to just keep going and continue to bring more housing to the market. So we're, we're really excited about this one. It has been in the works for a long time. <laughs> and uh, I think Garrett could probably speak to some of that, similar to how Dave did about El Mirage. Garrett, would you mind uh, going into some of the, the hurdles we've had to clear on this one? Sure. And I think, uh, like you said, it's taken almost two years to get this one to market. And one of the challenging issues that we had to overcome was the uh, floodplain uh, that went across about half of this project. Uh, we had to work with adjoining property owners to go through the Clomar application, and it has just taken a long, long time. And I think uh, in two weeks, we get final plot approval finally on this, uh, which we're excited for. And so we can get this recorded and get this off the ground. But uh, James Doolin, who is uh, a counterpart to me, has taken this through and has done fantastic. And again, all the accolades that uh, we showered on. The city of El Mirage, we would say the same thing about Surprise. It's been fantastic to work with them, uh, your planners, your engineers, uh, everyone that's involved. They've done a great job, and I'm seeing it firsthand on Sunnyside, which is the next project that we'll introduce. So, Garrett, I, I want to thank you. One of the things that um, is challenging sometimes for for people that aren't in development is that is that projects like yours had to have the uh, the patience and the resources to be able to take a non-commercially viable site that's in a floodplain, uh, be able to put that expertise to it, work with the various jurisdictions, and it ends up at the federal level uh, for approval, and to ultimately turn a site on to be commercially viable for community. And for an area like this to have a parcel like that, um, that is not commercially viable, uh, is, is actually uh, limiting. Uh, and so, so the private sector being able to make these types of investments, um, to have the patients, uh, to go through the proper process, uh, is something that should be applauded and, and really celebrated. Um, and now you're going to have new community members that can come in uh, off of a site that uh, was not commercially uh, viable just uh, 18 months ago. So, so thank you for, for your time, patience, and investment. Um, and uh, I'm glad a lot of the parcels in Surprise aren't like this, but the ones that are, um, we appreciate the uh, private sector coming in and, and bringing solutions. Sure, happy to do it. Excellent, excellent. Well, we're gonna, uh, you can see some basic stats on Hayden Farms there, 174 to total doors. 
and uh, uh, as far as what it's proximate to and and timing we've already kind of been through that but we're very excited to be here and, and thanks to the city of surprise and all the other entities and people that were involved in that one we um, we always can appreciate it when we're working through a project like this and um, I, I think that everybody we work with struck a really good balance between you know you've got a you got to hold your development plan you've got a process to adhere to you got to protect right the this in the city's interests but uh, also helping us move forward so we love it and we're gonna we're gonna stay in the city of surprise but we're gonna go to the exact opposite end of it and boomerang over to what's called sunny side we've got 44 plexes going in over here i think something that's very unique about this project that you'll all find interesting and we're all trying to figure out is the federal opportunity zone component that uh, was was passed back as, as part of the tax cuts and jobs act i believe to incentivize certain areas and you know the uh, the at the time the the presidential administration had each governor designate these opportunity zones in collaboration with the local officials where they wanted to see some development spring up we see potential over here um, off of greasewood a couple of blocks south of bell road so i told you exact opposite side of surprise here but it, it's a great project near near some parks and a cool little trail called lizard run you can kind of see it in the map there and and we think there's going to be some great integration with what the city already uh, has planned on this one. Garrett's been working on it, and I know the city has been uh, very, very cooperative on this one. They want to see it develop. Garrett, what's it been like on the approval process here? What's still, what are we still working on? What's to come? Well, again, uh, speaking to the planning and engineering, uh, because this was in an opportunity zone, we were able to take advantage of some uh, fast pass, if you will, to move us along quickly to get approvals that were necessary. And so uh, with the site plan, the staff approved the, the preliminary plat. We are working on the first round of final construction drawings and final plat. Hopefully we'll have those back in by, you know, within a couple of weeks so that we can make our final plat deadline, which would be sometime in, in May. And so that's what we're shooting for. Uh, again, some uniqueness because it was kind of the, uh, we had to fit into a, a, a hole of of what the city of surprise wanted to see in this area was some sort of retro uh, iron work and some different building types. And I think that we've done a good job and feel very confident that this will do a, will be a great enhancement to the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're, we're really excited here too, because you can see that that's a new floor plan for us there, that modern kind of industrial vibe to a townhouse. But, but really what it ends up being is an excellent unit for a, a prospective tenant who needs that three bedrooms, needs that two and a half bathrooms, um, but doesn't want to be involved in yard work or maintenance or things that come from renting, a, for example, a single family property. But then they also have a two car garage. You got somewhere to put your stuff, right? You can park your cars and you have a little bit of storage and a, and a place to play. So we're, we're really excited to bring this one to the market. And I think Garrett, this one's coming up out of the ground I think it's the fall of this year, so uh, I would say September of, of 2021 is when uh, we expect to start going vertical. Uh, Mid-fall? Yep. Fall? Is it not? Did we lose Steve again? <laughs> We're losing him. <laughs> so yes, it's mid-fall. It will be uh, probably September of 2021 when this will start going vertical. So I, before we transition to the last project, I want to say thank you again for uh, this investment in our heritage district. Um, that's actually the original square mile uh, of the city surprise. And it's, it's near and dear to our department in economic development. That is where the former city hall is located, which got transitioned into uh, a business incubator, which hosts several international companies. Um, so we've been fortunate um, to kind of make these types of strategic investments ourselves from a city perspective, uh, but to have this type of product coming into the Heritage District to bring new residents, to give people more opportunities, um, and to have these types of amenities uh, is just fantastic. So thank you again. Yep, happy to do it. We, we feel the same way. We're excited about this one. Do we have any other comments or questions with respect to, to Sunnyside or Hayden Farms? 
Where did you get the Sunnyside name from? I don't I know. The I city think, wanted uh, that name, didn't they? Or oh, no, Gary, no. you're not going to claim to be creative. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. If you never asked a question, you don't know the answer to. But I'm like, I I, I love the name. So that naming there comes from the property itself. Oh, the great. Ownership. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Got it has it. some history to it. That's wonderful. Yeah. So somebody had a good idea at some point. It just wasn't us. That's right. We'll take it though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Great. Great. So moving on to to the home stretch here and uh, a few a few new projects that are on on tap. One being 83rd and Thomas, and this is actually another federal opportunity zone down there in Phoenix. And for those that that have not become really familiar with the opportunity zone component, we we don't know what's going to happen with it. Right? We've had a, a change in in leadership here, but it, it seems like the new administration is warm to the concept in some way. Um, we have reason to believe that they kind of want to keep it around. So we'll, we'll see, we don't know. But what this really means is this great way, Mike mentioned private sector, it, it really brings money out of the private sector into the marketplace. And I think I'm probably at a point, um, so it what happens you have a gain in the sale of a business or a stock or something you can roll that money into an opportunity zone and really really minimize um, in some cases and we'll see what they do um, eliminate capital gains and, and some of the depreciation recapture that you might otherwise be subject to so it gets investors really excited but it's a challenge to put these together the right way for an investor. So it's an awesome idea, but executing it on the ground is difficult. So we're we're happy to have found two opportunity zone projects that are uh, friendly to the FIG business model. We'll we'll go through our slides. You see here, right there, big projects, right, just to the southeast of the CVS on the corner of 83rd and Thomas. There's already some newer apartment buildings and some, you know turning over a new inventory going in into the area but uh similar product you'll see the same kind of units that we're going to do up there at sunnyside same types of amenities and and we love it because it gives people an opportunity to experience a community and some amenities but at a price that is, is more realistic for them to do so this one um dave i think you're working on this one with us correct it, um yeah either yeah yeah so what's going on here? What's happening behind the scenes? What kind of magic are you doing, Dave? Well, one, one of the cool things about this uh, particular site, which I think is becoming more and more of a staple when uh, we did uh, planning back in the 80s and 90s, where uh, these large regional commercial centers of 40 and 100 acres, just these massive centers are kind of going by the wayside. And this is, this is one of the last remaining in this area where they had a, uh, multi-use planned community, but it was geared towards commercial. And, uh, and so in this case, we are taking the old, uh, the old zoning and, and going through the process. We don't necessarily have to go through a rezoning in particular, but we have to go through um, some of the, the P, what they call the PHO process with the city of Phoenix. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's like surprise and like uh, El Mirage, we've, we've got some great relationships at the city of Phoenix as well, where uh, we've got some people that are, are helping us take it through the process. Um, we, we haven't mentioned him yet, but uh, one, of, uh, one of the great members of our team is Adam Baugh with Withy Morris. Uh, he's, our, he's our attorney. He's been helping out with, uh, with these type of projects whenever we have a rezoning or a, or a PHO hearing or anything of that nature. Um, he's been been great to work with. Um, I think this is in uh, the Maryvale Village, and they were uh, very very helpful and amiable to, to to see our project and see it through. Um, but yeah, it's it's been there's been some minor challenges uh, with the with the site. Um, there's a lot of infill, so when you got infill and farmland and and also potential developments, um, you can see there's a there's kind of a nook cut out of the site where uh, the current owner wants to, to leave some commercial pads, um, same a, along the north. Um, and so that um, poses its, its own challenges of circulation and connectivity and, and things of that nature. Um, but, uh, but everybody's been very, very helpful, very, uh, very good to work with. Um, and it's, it's, been a, it's been definitely a pleasure working with the city of Phoenix to, to get this through the process. Excellent, thank you, Dave. Give you some basic stats on it. We're looking at 149 total units 
in that same modern townhouse style uh, unit that we that we mentioned previously. So, uh, any comments, questions, feedback on the 83rd and Thomas project? I think we've got uh, maybe one, two more behind this that we'll highlight faster, but I want to give you a, a moment on this. Quick question, when did you start the process uh, with Phoenix on this project? Let's see, we started that data, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, July of 2020. Okay. Okay, so it's tracking very similar from a process perspective to El Mirage and the City of Surprise. There's um, big cities, smaller cities, they're all they're all working with you. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. So we've got a couple more coming soon, right? We're continuing to work uh, a lot in the west side, even coming into the, some of the south side of Phoenix, right? There's one right off of 19th Avenue in Dobbins. Right, I think we're going to call that one the Villas at Montana Sur, and uh, we're just smaller, 32 townhouse style units, but it'll be a great addition to that neighborhood off of 19th Avenue and Dobbins. I think we will start coming up out of the ground on that one in uh, probably the middle of the summer this year. So, given its size, we can we can move it through a little bit more more quickly. And then, in addition to that one, uh, not too not too far away from it, 35th and Southern Avenue. In Phoenix, we love this one, right? A great, great location that's going to be continue to bring residents to the area. More of the modern townhouse style unit, but some of the same stuff that you've seen us talking about before, with the the two car garage and some light amenities for the the tenants in there. Uh, we haven't mentioned this to our investor list lately. That we know they're going to be excited about it as well. Construction probably will begin later in uh, 2021 on this one. Uh, Garrett, when do you expect we're going to record the plat on this one? Can you give an educated guess on that yet? Uh, the recorded plat will probably be uh, July or August of 2021. So now you're, you've become a bit of a cat herder on this particular project. You've got a lot of, a lot of different balls in the air. Will you speak to a little bit about what's going on and some of the, the hurdles that we're still having to get through? Sure. Uh, you know, again, as uh, Dave mentioned on 83rd Avenue and Thomas, uh, kind of the same lines here, there was a, uh, a, a large uh, multi-use commercial tenant that uh, never materialized on this and it had a, a plat, a PAD that was approved on it. We had to go through the process of the PHO, work with Levine Village. Uh, we still are in the process of that. Uh, the hearing is actually next month for that approval to remove the stipulations that are necessary for this to move forward along those same lines there were ccnrs that were covering this whole thing that was uh, geared towards a commercial development uh, we have to de-annex out of those ccnrs give those ccnrs back to the commercial users that are fronting on to 35th avenue and have them maintain their own uh, storefronts and accesses uh, which has become a challenge as well. And so there's a lot of moving parts, but I, I think that we're getting close to having those all taken care of here shortly uh, and moving forward as planned. Excellent, excellent. Um, just how things are running in Phoenix with the economy, uh, with the growth that we're seeing, um, I can tell you this much, we here at FIG, we talk to investors from all over the world um, many all over the U.S., but even all over the world right now. And when they've heard that we're going into Phoenix, that is very, very well thought of, right? People are excited about what you're up to there and, and the growth that's being experienced. They view it as a, a place where capital can be put to work that is uh, landlord friendly, but also has lots of jobs for tenants. Um, <laughs> this is no surprise to you, but you're moving a lot of money out of Southern California right now. If you <laughs> and uh, they're calling us every single day and they're very very interested in putting their their capital to work in your community and we're we're grateful to you for creating a place that allows us to do business and and our investors to make a profit and to provide good housing to to the fine people in maricopa county so um with that we've kind of covered on from the fig standpoint the majority of, of what we want to cover but we're here for questions or comments or or anything else that you'd like to turn it turn it back to Yes. Um, so, so Steve and, and, and the group, I, I do have a couple quick questions. Um, so thank you for um, actually ended up being a half dozen uh, projects. That's what we aim to do at Westmark, always uh, uh, under promise and over deliver. Um, but I guess 
let's let's think of it from this perspective. If um, uh, a community, uh, uh, whether it be a landowner or uh, a significant community member, um, wanted to try to work with you on optimizing the site, what are some of, some of the minimums they should be thinking about from a land a land size perspective to to be able to deliver a, a project for you? Is it in that four acre range, eight acre range, twelve acre range? What what what's kind of the minimum to be able to um, to deliver some of this product? Garrett, I'll defer to you on that. Sure. Um, as, as we mentioned here on Dobbins and, and 19th Avenue, that's only a two and a half acre site yeah. that we're able to repurpose uh, for this type of product type. So I don't think anything's too small uh, and we would go up to about 20 acres if we could diversify the product mix enough for it to be absorbed within the community. So we'll look at anything from, from two to 20, let's say. That's great. And so when you're talking about, and this, if this is, uh, for lack of a better word, confidential, that's fine, but um, it's Fat Tuesday, so I'll get a little crazy. Uh, so when you're talking about your, your investors, uh, and it's great to see you have a portfolio that's worldwide, um, but let's say someone approached you on a, on a piece of property, do you have the investor bench right now to be able to move quickly, or, do you, or is, there, um, is there a bit of a, a time constraint that you have to go and, and recruit the investors for specific projects like that? So on the on the land side of it, uh, FIG actually works to what we do is we actually buy the dirt and improve the dirt, and then take the investor and they come in and buy a fourplex and then they own the the ground underneath that fourplex, which helps fund or repay that loan that we took out to do all the improvements. So it's kind of a trickle down, trickle up, which way you want to look at yep. it. But um, so that's why you're able to keep it going. Yeah. Yep. Got it. Not to say that we wouldn't take if someone uh, had some property that they said this would be a great use and then subordinate to a loan and we can pay them back in fourplexes, we'd do that as well. We're, we're open to whatever it means to make the project work. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you worked with municipalities, this isn't a solicitation for the City of Surprise, but just out of curiosity, have you worked with municipalities on public lands? We have not yet, no. Okay. That's great. This is... Uh, and I know there's a lot of great uh, multifamily and 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 different types of housing developers coming into into Greater Phoenix because of the uh, the market potential you described. But to see uh, the representation that you provided with the different products in the different locations, I mean, um, it's 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 just fantastic. Because like I said, we had an eight-year run in the West Valley where we just were not delivering uh, any any new product that that brought in. Um, uh, voice. Voice. So Tom Doyle, did you did you have any follow-ups or, or questions uh, for our for our colleagues here? No, I mean I I love your product. Um, like you said, you're 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 offering something that's different than uh, uh, than than what we traditionally see with the investor uh, style. Um, I I wish you a huge success. We are going to do everything we can from the city of El Mirage to help promote. Uh, this this development and um, like I said, I, I just wish you much much uh, success. Thank you. Okay, guys. So one of the things that we like to do um, on Open for Business is I ask a question and you give a one word response to the question. So Garrett, we're going to put you in the hot seat first, and we're going to go across everybody. Um, so we talked about uh, the market potential in, in the in the West Valley that you're seeing. What's the one word you would use to describe to an investor for that market potential? Robust. Okay, Steve? Profitable. And David? It's hot. <laughs> ah, I love it. And uh, Tom Doyle, my colleague in El Mirage. New, uh, it's two words, new territory. Ah, breaking rules. I love I love the private sector guys follow the rules. The city guy had to break it. <laughs> and then he uh, hyphened it. And then with our, our good friend uh Central Central Hoffman with Westmark, what would be the one thing you would use to describe the West Valley market right now? Hot. Hot. Yeah. I would say on fire, because that's typically what I say, but that would be breaking the rules. So I'll stick to hot. <laughs> Uh, Garrett, Steve, David, uh, Tom, thank you for a, a great conversation. This was uh, a, a wonderful second edition in 2021, and um, 
uh, we hope to see you again soon, and, and I hope to work with you on these projects as they come out of the ground. Thank you very we much. Absolutely. It. Thank you. Mike, just a few words before um, we lose everyone. So I, again, thank you so much on behalf of Westmark for presenting today. Just a few stats um, for you. The uh, median average, age, the median age of the West Valley is now 35 years old. So that's getting a lot younger and your product is definitely in line with, um, with the younger crowd. Uh, Ottawa University obviously being in, um, in surprise, uh, you know, great amenities along Bell Road. Um, robust healthcare systems that we have in the West Valley. So all of this just really tying very well into this and, um, and our strategy to attract more of the young talent and tech market moving forward. So I really appreciate it. And again, just kind of seeing what you're, you're doing throughout the Northwest Valley and, and in Phoenix really is changing the landscape of uh, those communities. So appreciate your time today. Um, for the rest of you out there, our next um, Open for Business is scheduled for March 16th, same time, same place. And we also have openings on both the 16th of March as well as April 20th. So if you're interested in featuring your project, just give us a call and let us know and we will, we will give you the, the hour spotlight. So thank you all. Thank you, Sintra. Thank you. Thanks again, guys. Appreciate your time.